everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today's session is about removing high ISO noise from your handheld photos. Whether you're traveling with a tr uh, without a tripod, wanting to capture really fast action shots, or need to shoot handheld indoor photography, maybe you're at an event where you need to go from outdoors to indoors very quickly, there are times when you have to increase your ISO to capture what you want. So with Topaz Denoise, you can shoot without worrying about the noise that high ISOs can cause. So today we're going to talk about how to use denoise to remove that really difficult image noise from these handheld photos. So today we're going to be work. this is one of the images that we're going to be working on. Let me show you the original here. Here's our original image. And I'm just going to scroll right on in. We'll even go all the way to 100% so you can see exactly how difficult this noise is. This was shot at ISO 25600. It's an H2 setting on the Canon 5D Mark II. And you can see just how much color noise is happening here. Banding noise, which is the long lines of noise that you can kind of see those going horizontally across the, the image. It's a very difficult type of noise to uh, work with. You can see the shadow tone color casts that are happening within the shadows and it's ex just extreme contrast noise. Now some of you might wonder why shoot at that high of an ISO? Well I really didn't have a choice in the matter. I had a um, camera with me during a wine tour where the lighting was literally one overhead light in a huge cavernous room underground. We weren't allowed to bring in tripods and I, you weren't allowed to shoot flash either. So I brought my camera in thinking, you know what, I'll go up to ISO 800, 1600 and Denoise will be able to handle that in a second. Well, I actually had to go really high with my ISO as far as I could push it. Let me just show you this file info really quickly. And we were, I shot at 25600 and it still was only at 1 20th of a second at f4. So it's a tiny bit blurry as well just because of the exposure, the shutter speed. But by raising my IS ISO this high, I was able to capture something that I really enjoyed and knew that I could still tackle this amount of noise in Topaz Denoise. So let's take this image into Topaz Denoise. I'm just going to take this background, make a quick copy. Let's click right there and go Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise. Let me skip this intro here. And I'm gonna come down to this bottom right and press reset all so we get all the settings back to where they were, or, or where they are by default. I'm also going to make sure this is at 100%, there we are. If you're unfamiliar with denoise, over here on the left-hand side, we have our presets and preset information. And then in the middle area is where you're going to see your main preview, where you can actually preview many different types of noise that is going to be isolated by our preview modes over here on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side is the preview mode, the an area where you can brighten up your image using the auto brighten preview and all of your noise reduction sliders. We're going to be covering this entire uh, workflow here today and then we're going to go into one other image that has a bit less of a uh, ISO but still pretty high and see how quickly denoise can really tackle that. But for this first one we're going to go through all of this um, and all of the sliders to show you exactly how you tackle this type of noise. The first thing that I like to do when I come into Topaz Denoise is find a preview area that has my shadow tones, my highlights, and my midtones. The reason I do this is because Topaz Denoise, every time you move your image around, is going to process this. Let me just show you this real quick. I'm going to take that up. And every time you move that preview around, it's going to reprocess down here at the bottom. And for large images like this, it can be uh, somewhat time consuming and so this is just a quick time saver tip. If you find a shadow area, a highlight, and a midtone, you won't need to move your image uh, preview around at all during this session unless you want to uh, recheck some things right there at the end. So what I'm going to do is put it, put my preview right about here. I also like to try to find the area that it has some focus as well. But this is a great area because I have my midtones over here on the right hand side and in the bottom here. I have a really strong highlight with the reflection on the wine bottle in the lower right. And then I have a ton of shadow area, which is something that we're going to have to work extra hard on here. So 
this is a great area to start off with. I might actually move this a tiny bit to the right. All right, at that point, if I have already created a preset, I'm just gonna come over to this left-hand side and choose a preset. For this image, I have not, or from this set of images, we're going to assume I have not created a preset yet. But the preset creation, especially when you're working with a batch of images, is very, very important within this program because you can easily use Photoshop's automation batching and quickly just apply the same preset to the whole batch of images and make this process that much quicker. So. After we're done, we're going to come over here and make a nice preset for this batch of images. So to do that, I'm going to come over here onto the uh, right-hand side, and the first thing I'm going to do is change my preview mode. The first preview mode is RGB, and this is going to show you the red, green, and blue channel. This is your color channel that shows you your original image information. We have four other types of preview, preview modes that isolate different types of image noise. The first one is going to be Luma, which will show you just your contrast noise and allow for you to focus on that without being uh, distracted by all of the color noise that's happening in addition to this contrast noise. So I like to start off there. I also like to come to my Auto Brighten Preview mode and change my Auto Brighten Preview to normal or strong, depending upon the darkness of my original image. The reason is shadow noise can really hide deep in those shadows. So when you're at a setting of off and it's just at the normal image brightness that you shot it with, you'll see that you have some noise coming through that shadow area, but if you go to normal or even strong, it'll really stand out and you can really work on it that much more clearer. Let's stick with normal for this. A particular image. Now the first step for me in this image, because I have such extreme banding noise going on, I'm going to go directly to my debanding tab. Banding noise, if you're not familiar with it, are the lengthy, they kind of, they're like lines that go across your image and it usually happens at much higher ISO settings. So Changing your ISO to, let's say, 1600 or 800, you might not see that banning noise, but when you're working with as high ISO as I have here, most likely your sensor will start to produce this long, thin banding noise. Within Topaz Denoise, we have a very quick way of dealing with this. Just open up your debanding tab and click on horizontal, click on vertical, and you might not see things right away. It always kind of tricks my eye. But if you press the before and after, which you can do so with the space bar, here's before, you can see those lines within the shadows really start to stand out. And now after I let go of the space bar, it now blends in much easier. I'll go back to the RGB mode just so you can see this. This is before, and you really start to see those color lines, color pattern lines, and after. They just start to disappear. So that's as, as quickly as you can deal with debanding noise, which is one of the most difficult types of noise to work with in other programs. The other thing that I like to do, especially with very high ISO <clears throat> noise, is go into my noise reduction area and immediately come down to this correct black level slider and take it all the way to the left at zero. Majority of the time, leaving it at one, which is that default uh, value will be okay. But when you're dealing with this much shadow noise and um, removal of cast, color cast and smudges of larger noise, color noise, taking that correct black level slider will just make it easier to work with and then you can uh, work with this. And I'll tell you more about this later. Let's go back into our Luma mode. <clears throat> and when you're in your Luma mode, you're gonna work with the three top sliders within that noise reduction area. The overall strength, will take all of your overall noise down, including color noise. But again, we're in this Luma channel, so we're just focusing on the contrast noise. When you're taking your overall strength slider up, you're going to want to focus on that mid-tone area, so over here to the right. Don't focus on the shadow area, and don't worry if you're softening up your highlights because you can go in and work with those in the two sliders below the overall strength. Just keep taking your overall strength slider up until you start to see a nice removal of the contrast noise within that shadow area without too much smoothing. Here's before, here's after. I'm liking what's happening here. 
Now let's go ahead and work with our shadow noise. There's a lot more noise going on in our shadows than there are in our highlights, so we can come into our adjust shadow and move that to the right to increase the amount that you reduce within your shadows only. So what I like to do is focus on making my shadow noise or my shadow areas kind of match the same level that I just worked with in my midtones. And I'm gonna actually take this up probably in both areas to remove a little bit more. And there we have it. All right, so now we have uh, adjust highlights. Adjust highlights, you really need to focus in on your highlight area, but majority of the time I find that my bright highlights get softened way too much when I'm dealing with high ISO noise because you have to really take that noise reduction up within the overall strength, which majority of the time you won't need to do so much within your highlights. So I take that to the left, and you'll just see that highlight area start to crisp up those edges instead of being uh, soft like they were a couple steps ago. Now when I get down into my adjust color red, that's when you change preview modes. These preview modes are, I think, the top thing you need to know about within Topaz Denoise. If you're not familiar with them, you're not using Denoise to the largest amount that you can or to the highest capability that you can. This really allows you to isolate all different types of noise and focus in very quickly on reducing that particular type of noise. The adjust color red, or the red preview mode, allows you to adjust your red color noise. So as you take this to the right, you'll start to see a reduction in um, the patterns and splotches of tone that you see within this channel. Here's before and here's after. What you want to pay attention to in, in both the adjust color red and blue sliders is just a flattening out of the tone and any sort of patterns that you start to see. So I'm still seeing a kind of a crosshatch pattern in my shadow area, so I'm just going to take that adjust color red up. That looks pretty good. Here's before and after. And now I'm going to go into my blue preview mode so I can view my blue channel noise. Here's before and after. Now this is just after all of the uh, noise reduction that we've done above this particular slider, but now we can focus in more on just that blue. Take that to the right and you'll start to reduce that blue color noise. And I'm still seeing quite a bit of pattern going on, so I'm just taking that up. And I'll get to view this a little bit better back in the RGB channel. Once I get done with my blue channel noise, I come to my clean color slider, and that's when you switch to your color preview mode. I like to take my color preview mode when I'm in that color preview mode and take my auto brighten strength to strong, because you'll see the color noise that much clearer. If I look at before, this is what's already been done to my color noise with that blue, red, and overall noise reduction that we've already done. Here's before and here's after. You might say, well, that looks pretty good, but you still see some large amount, large splotches, kind of um, just areas that have uh, like this magenta area, for example, within the shadows or some extra noise along the edges. What the clean color slider will do is reduce those larger kind of color casts that might still be happening that weren't handled by the adjust color red or blue. And it'll also clean up the edge color noise quite nicely and smooth everything out. And now we get to our correct black level slider. This is where you go back into your RGB mode and you turn your auto brighten off. And what you're focusing in on for the correct black level slider are your black or shadow areas. Because majority of the time when you're dealing with these high ISO images, you're going to have some sort of shadow color cast happening. And this correct black level can just be thought of as a shadow restoration. You're just bringing your shadows back to black. So here's before. This is what we've done so far. Before. And here's what we've done with our noise reduction process so far, which is looking great. But you can see that there's a magenta cast that's still happening within our shadow area, and that is what this correct black level slider will do. I have quite a few people ask me, okay, you have the red, you have the blue, where's the green reduction slider? This is 
This can be thought of as a green to magenta type of slider because as you take this to the right, basically it's just adding more green and darkness into your shadows to correct some of that magenta cast that tends to happen and will help to balance out that green channel. So here's before, here's after. Doing an excellent job so far, so I think it's working here. Uh, the next area that below the noise reduction is going to be your detail recovery. Within the detail recovery, I'm now satisfied in my RGB channel. These preview modes are mostly used for your noise reduction area. Once you get into your detail recovery, if you're not already in an area that has your details or the most detailed area that you can find, go ahead and move there because this will be very helpful in knowing how much detail you need to recover. So let me show you this before and after. Here's before and after here. So we haven't lost all that much detail within our major detail lines, uh, transitions here. It actually is quite sharp still considering how much noise we've taken out of this image, but there is a bit of softening happening or the illusion of softening happening within some of the texture of the wood here. So using that detail recovery slider is going to help bring that back out and make sure that you don't lose any detail or um, at least the illusion of detail. So recover detail is that first slider and that's gonna work on just extracting some of the detail from the areas that are softening up. I usually find that about 0.3 or 0.4 is good for heavy ISO noise. I don't usually go above that because you'll start to see within your areas where you don't have a lot of detail that it starts to try to put detail. So that's where artifacts start to happen. Same idea with the reduced blur. If you have a really lovely, strong lined image that doesn't have a lot of negative space, then that reduced blur slider is your best friend. But if you have an image like this where you have a lot of empty tonal areas that don't have a lot of detail, that reduced blur is going to just try to um, reduce the blur, but instead it's going to add some artifacts. So know that if you're seeing artifacts in your image, check these two sliders and make sure that that isn't the case or that's not the reason um, they're being caused. The one slider that I feel is one of the most important sliders within Topaz Denoise is the Add Grain slider. And it might seem a little counterintuitive because you're actually adding contrast noise back into your image. But it's a grain, so it's a very, very small and it's it's a uh, monochromatic, so it's not going to um, have all these different colors. It's just going to be a very simple type of grain being added back in. And what that will do is give you the illusion of detail if you don't have enough detail being extracted from that noise reduction process. So let me show you that again. Here's before. Here we have some areas down here that you kind of feel like they have a little bit of detail with this color noise. It might not actually be there, but once you've reduced that, you're left with just a little bit of texture happening here. And what this add grain slider allows for is it to feel like it has more detail right there, even though you're adding that grain back on top of it. Here's before, here's after. There's very little softening of your image, so you've been able to or I've been able to reduce my noise to a point where I'm happy and keep, preserve detail as well. So now I'm just gonna kind of scoot around this image a little bit and check out some before and afters just to show you what we've done and that you don't necessarily need to consistently move this preview navigator around to know that the rest of your image is going to look good. So look at what we've done in this shadow area. Here's before, here's after, this is an awesome result for ISO 25,600, <laughs> which is pretty high. Here's before, here's after. And we'll come back down here to an area that has a bit of detail. Here's before and after. I'd probably work on this a little bit more to refine my results by going back up into my noise reduction slider and maybe taking one or two sliders down a little bit. But I'm pretty happy with the results here and I'm gonna press OK and get back into Topaz Denoise. And I forgot the last most important step, which is creating a preset from these 
uh, sliders that we just changed. The good thing is, is that you can go back into Denoise and it's going to have the same settings applied so you can just recreate that preset very quickly. Let me show you this before and after really quick before I go back in. Here's before. Look at all the image noise here, all the color cast that's going on. Heavy, heavy noise down here in the right corner and after. We were able to clear that up. Our blacks are going closer to black. Shadow looks good. Shadow restoration looks great. And that is how Denoise can help you reduce your high ISO noise. Let me go ahead and show you the preset area because it's really important within Denoise. If you are using the exact same settings, so um, F4, ISO 25600, in the same type of light, so this whole shoot that I was using this setting in with the same camera, same lens, etc. If you're doing the same settings with your camera, you can always go back and apply that same preset to all of your pictures and it's going to remove that same amount of noise that's produced by your sensor. So because it's your individual camera, that's creating or producing that same type of noise for this setting and the camera settings and this type of light, you can always refer back to that one. So let's go ahead and just to take a new fresh image in, I'll go ahead and go filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise. It's just going to apply the last few settings that we had, which, yes, it did. So great, we're here at the... Um, last few settings here. And now I can come down here to my lower left corner and press the gear icon. The gear icon will pull up the different preset options I have and you can click on save. This is a very different preset dialog box than the rest of our presets which are more effect based within our other programs. This is going to be a more technical preset um, dialog. So here you can say your preset name and I'll either usually name my presets by the type of light and uh, that that I'm in. So maybe low light, very low light, or if it's a batch of images that I have a thousand different images on, I might just say, you know, winery or something like that. So I'll always know that that's the the right one. You then have to choose what kind of preset type you like, relative to the noise estimate or absolute. Absolute is great if the whole batch of images that you're working on has the exact same camera settings. But let's say you have a couple different, uh, or let's say you've moved your ISO from anywhere from 6400 to the 25,600. So your noise is still heavy, but it's not exactly the same in each image. You might wanna try the relative to noise estimate saving type. And what it's gonna do is basically apply the same look of the noise reduction versus the exact same settings. You can say in the next area who it was created by, and then you can put the type of camera you were using, not just camera, <laughs> Canon 5D Mark II. The ISO selection only goes up to 12800, so let's do 25600. You can just type that in. The image type, raw, description, you can say inside Spanish winery. You can do any sort of description you'd want. If you'd rather describe the type of light you were in, that might be better for future um, images. So if this is an indoor wedding preset, you can say indoor wedding with low light or with medium light. So you can always refer back to this if you're using the same camera and camera settings for multiple weddings or multiple lifestyle events. Uh, you're able to come in and use that preset again and again. So now I can press OK and it's over here on the lower left. And now I'm able to quickly just come in and click on that preset for each image and be done with it. Let's say OK and it's going to process again. And now we'll go into a little bit easier, less uh, extreme amount of noise, but still heavy, high ISO noise. It's going to be a little bit more common type of noise. I believe it's a 6400 ISO. So we'll take a look at that and you can see how quickly you can actually go through this process once, you've, once you're familiar with the tools and the preview modes. All right, here's this image. Let's take a look at 100%. So this image has much better focus because it had better light, 
didn't have to go up to 25,600, but you can see that it still has a ton of noise, ton of uh, color noise going on within the shadow areas, and some significant contrast noise as well. So let's take a look at this file info and just see what's happening. Looks like we have ISO 6400 at F4, 1 50th of a second. So much easier noise to deal with than the 25,600 and probably more common amongst most users of denoise. So let's take this image in instead. We'll take this background, make a quick copy, and go to denoise. One very common question I get is when should denoise or my noise reduction workflow be applied? always at the beginning. The more that you work on your image or do adjustments or sharpening or anything like that, it's going to make noise that much more difficult to remove or reduce because it has increased the edge sharpness of each individual piece of noise. Um, probably your program that you're doing your edits with looked at that noise as detail versus noise and again just sharpen that up, change the color, and made it that much more difficult. So noise reduction is usually um, better to do at the very beginning of your image workflow. I'm going to come over here and press reset all and go to a highlight, shadow, and midtone area. And this is actually a fairly good spot for me here. We have our more highlight of this wood back here, midtones of my background wood, and shadows within the deep shadow underneath the shelf. Plus, I have a great amount of detail as well so I won't have to move during my detail recovery portion. The first thing I'm going to do is hop down into my debanding and quickly do a horizontal and vertical reduction there. Here is the before and after of that. Before and after. So it didn't make a huge difference but just in case there were any lines I like to do that debanding with this higher ISO setting. And now I'm going to go into my luma mode. My shadow noise is really hiding here, so I'm going to take my auto brighten preview to normal or strong. I think I'm going to go normal because I'm really blowing out those highlights when I go to the strong area, and I still get to see a, a significant more amount of noise in that shadow area. And now I'm going to go directly to my noise reduction, focusing on my mid-tones. Again, I will just take that overall strength down, and now I will take my shadow noise down even more, focusing in on my shadow area. I forgot to take that correct black level slider down, which will reopen some of that shadow area for me to check out that noise. Okay, I'm going to take my adjust highlight to the left and bring back some of the highlight uh, detail. You can really see that in this particular example. A lot of people ask sometimes, I can't really tell what's happening. Keep an eye out on that uh, piece of wood there right in the middle. As I take my adjust highlight back to zero, you'll see that it just softens up the detail of the wood itself, the grain. And as I take that adjust highlight down, I can start to see some of that grain of the wood again, just clear up that much more crisper. Now we're down to our adjust color red, go into that red color preview mode, take that red slider up until you start to see a reduction of the pattern and overall smoothness of those open tone areas where there aren't a lot of details. <clears throat> My blue preview mode, same thing. You don't have to be too careful about these two sliders because you can always tell when you're back in your RGB mode if there's still some significant color noise left over. Then your color preview mode, going into my strong. Here's a great example of these larger patches of color noise that are still within the image and the color. And you can see that a little bit more clearly in this image than you could in the other and how clean color is going to affect that. How it just smooths that out, clears up those edges, and really helps with those larger transitions of color. Now we're down to our correct black level again, so you have to go into RGB and off. Let me show you the before and after of what we've already done. Here's before and after. So it's actually looking fairly good. Let me go down to my shadow areas here and see if I even see any color cast that's happening. Here's before, here's after. I've removed quite a bit of that color cast just with the removal of the noise itself. Let me see what happens as I take this correct black level slider up. Sometimes it 
adds too much green back in. So you want to be careful there. But I was able to remove a little bit more of that magenta cast. And now I can focus in on my detail. Here's before. Here's after. Let's go to 200% to really check out what we've been able to do. There we go. Okay, so here's before, and you can see all of that color noise and contrast noise. Here's after. I've cleared that all up. It's looking pretty nice. I'm still seeing some serious grain in my wood, so that's good. I see that detail. I'm at 200%, so it does look a bit soft, but I'm still going to go into my detail recovery while I'm at 200% just to show you how well it clears up those lines. So I'm going to say recover detail to 0.3 or so, maybe 0.4. It's just going to crisp up those lines really nicely. Here's where reduce blur might be a really great option to um, clear up some of those areas of blur and just crisp up the lines. Look at this texture area at the top of the image. As I take this reduce blur up, you'll just see it pull out these nice detailed lines and contrast and reduce that blur quite nicely. So I'll, I'll take that up just a touch to get crisp lines up there. And then with my add grain, I always take that up about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, somewhere around there. So here's before, here's after. Let me go back to 100%. Make sure everything looks good. Before and after. I'm really happy here, so I'm going to press OK. And I would have made a preset with that 6400 setting because this was such a significant difference, even though it was in the same tour, it was a significant difference in light within that space. So it gave me a very different type of noise and a much easier to handle noise. So I wouldn't need that 25,600 uh, preset. So I would make an additional preset for these types of images for this batch. All right, so I hope this gives you a good idea of how you can use denoise to remove really high ISO, difficult image noise from your handheld photos. Have a great rest of the day, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are, and we'll be talking to you on Thursday. Bye, everyone.